Hi, welcome to this, our lesson on matrices. And by the end of this lesson, you should please hopefully know what a matrix is. Be able to describe a matrix, be able to add and subtract matrices, be able to multiply by a scalar, and be able to multiply the two matrices if they are defined. Now, there's an interesting word, defined. We'll come back to that in a moment. But I don't know about you, this, that whole matrix chain of movies, if you've seen it, I, to this day, I still don't get it. I've watched all three of them. There were three. They felt like more. And I watched them and I was like, I don't get this, it's too confusing. I mean, awesome special effects and Keanu Reeves is great in everything he does. But anyway, too much information. Is that what we're dealing with? A deep discussion of the film Matrix? No. Those of you who are lucky to be taught by me, yes, as is the usual drill, that is the work I would very much like you to complete. Exercise 7E, e. and if you're out there into an internet land going, what? Then I am following the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which is phenomenal. If you don't want to know what it is, then you probably are missing out. Thanks very much to the guys over there at Cambridge for doing such an awesome job. Now, first things first, I suppose, what is a matrix? Now, if we were to go into the ins and outs of what matrices are for, they are awesome. Your credit cards, your debit cards, your ATM cards, all store on that little plastic or metal chip information in a matrix form. Now, obviously, not quite as simple as this one here, and it's beyond the scope of this video, but here is a matrix. Now, the good thing to know about matrices are that we deal with rows and columns. Everything about matrices is rows and columns. Uh, hopefully, those of you who know uh, what a row is will know that this is a row, and those of you who know what a column is will know that everything vertically is a column of them. Really important to know is that actually each individual number is called an element, and each element actually has some sort of code. So, for example, here we've got this capital A. Now, matrices are generally always given a letter to define them so that we can very much like algebra have different things stand for different things so let's call this matrix a this element here would be a and basically it has r and c this little subscript this little value below is actually the row and the column so for example a to one means that basically it is the second row and the first column if I had A, 2, 3, that would be the second row and the third column. And so in which case, if we had the second row and the third column, my element would be 4. Now, sometimes they try and confuse people by using this stuff, but the concept of rows and columns is actually really, really important because it helps us know whether we can add and subtract and, and, and all sorts of parts of the uh, maths. So first things first, this would generally be expressed as A, 2, by three and i'm going to put it in brackets just so that it's obvious because later on that becomes helpful two rows by three columns rc moving swiftly on because this chapter is quite easy really in the sense of it's about adding matrices together and subtracting them multiplying them whatever this is the basics first things first when we add matrices together and i'm going to choose very very simple matrices we have to make sure that they have the same number of rows and columns to be able to add them together. Otherwise, it really, really wouldn't make it sense. So how many rows do we have here? We have one by two, and this one here is also a one by two. And I always write underneath them what they are, because later on it's going to help us with um, division. Uh, sorry, multiplication. Oh, division is an interesting one. So when we add those together, you actually add the first element of the first matrix to the first element of the second. So one plus two is three, and we add each of the second elements together, and in this case, 2 plus 3 would be 5. And there, lo and behold, is my answer. Doing uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I am the count. Then I love the count. 4, 7, 0, minus 2, because we can actually have negative numbers in this. Same thing. Can they be added together? Yes, because this is a 2 by 2. This is a 2 by 2. My result is going to be a 2 by 2. And so 1 plus 4 is 5. 2 plus 7 is 9, 3 plus 0 is 3, and 4 plus minus 2 is minus 2. So addition, actually, of matrices is really, really simple. What about subtracting matrices? Well, again, same rules apply. So long as they are the same order, so long as they have the same number of rows and columns, then you can subtract them as well. So 1, 2, 7, 3, uh, subtracted from 2, 4, 0, minus 3. Let's do that. So again, first element, first element, one minus two is minus one. 
2 minus 4 is negative 2, this is going to be gross. 7 minus 0 is thankfully 7. And 3 minus minus 3 would give me 6. Don't forget those minus minuses. And just to point out that if we try to do something like 1 comma 2, take away 7, 4, 3, 0, well, that's simply not going to work. How, what would you take away from each other? I mean, I'm sure people like those, well, I can take the 1 and the 7 away, but after that, it's really not going to work. So please always remember that the order of a matrix, and again, the order is this thing here, 2 by 2, is defined as the order, is really, really important. Now, we're going to deal with multiplication in two stages. Firstly, by multiplying by scalar. Well, what on earth is a scalar? Well, I found this awesome graphic here. They gave you sort of, in terms of physics, uh, the idea that a scalar is basically what we call a magnitude. It's just a size. Whereas a vector quantity, which again, if you're doing uh, science, you'll probably need to know, has both magnitude and direction. So over here in Australia, for example, well, and all around the world, we have speeds in things like 60 kilometers per hour. Now, is that a scalar or a vector? Well, interestingly, in this situation, it's a scalar. But if I said I was traveling 60 kilometers per hour due north, now it's a vector. Why? Because here is my magnitude, it's a size. And here, due north, is the direction in which I am traveling. Speeds tend to make more sense if I know which direction I'm traveling. Although, you know, ultimately we tend to say, ah, oh, it's going 60 kilometers an hour. Now, when we multiply a matrix by a scalar, it's lovely and easy, we multiply all the elements in the matrix by the scalar. Huh? What? So, four, bracket, one, two, three, four. Nice and easy numbers to use. This here is my scalar. And as is if we had 3x plus 2, we would know that everything outside the bracket multiplies everything inside the bracket. The same goes with um, matrices. So we now multiply all of those numbers by 4. So we get 4, 8, 12, and 16. Lovely, jubbly, easy, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, later on, we're going to talk about uh, taking the inverse of a matrix. Not so much in this lesson, but yeah, certainly in the next one, by taking the inverse of a matrix. Now, what you're going to end up there is you're going to have, generally, fractions outside. And that's not a bad thing. We, we, you know, please don't get to the point where you go, oh, I can't do fractions, it's too hard, too hard, too hard. All you do, once again, is multiply everything inside by that half outside. So my fraction would become, or my matrix would become a half, one, uh, three on two, and two. No big deal. Now, the great thing is, actually, if I had a matrix, say, 9, 18, 27, and 36, and I've deliberately chosen these values, I can actually do, I'm going to use the words matrix division, but I can actually divide each of those terms and move a scalar outside, because we know that all of those can be divided by 3, or those individual terms. So I'd have 3, uh, 6, 12, 18... Uh, six, uh, sorry, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, so that would be 6. Oh, how many 3s go in 27? Cool, that's uh, 9 and, let's say, 12. And in fact, I could probably divide that once again by 3. So I could actually take 9 out of each of those. So 9 gives me a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and a count, and I like the count. This general idea of having this matrix um, scalar, or this scalar multiplier, actually is, again, really important for a subject called inverse matrices. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on tight, because we are going to get funky now. Multiply two matrices together, taking the product, is absolutely flipping awesome. I love this stuff, but it is an algorithm. It is a pattern. It is a way of doing things. And I found this really, really awesome graphic online that hopefully I can use to explain it to you. First things first, we have to check whether two matrices can even be multiplied. And you're going to say, well, what do I mean by that? Well, if we go back to this order business, the order of a matrix is really important. So if we look at this as rows and columns, we've got two by three, and this one here is a three by two. Now I'm going to tell you, if this end number and this start number are the same, then it is called defined. Our function or our... Um, and multiplication is defined because it means that they can actually multiply together. This number here, this first number and last number, actually turns out to be the order of our resultant vector, or our resultant matrix. So that's 2 by 2. Now, 
what you've got to realize is that this is very much like FOIL. So if you go back to um, algebra and we had x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2, if you remember what FOIL stands for, first, outside, inside, last, you do the first times the first, first times the second, second times the first, and second times the second. All right, so first and first, first and second, second and first, second and second. So you're following a pattern. And actually, that is exactly the same here when we multiply vectors. I always deal with the first row and the first column. And to get each of the numbers, if you look here, it's trying to tell you out longhand what it is, but you multiply each pair of numbers and add them together. So what do I mean by that? Well, rubbing this out and doing it again, just showing you how it's done. I have 1 times 7 plus 2 times 9, plus 3 times 11. As I'm moving along my column, sorry, as I'm moving along my row, I'm moving down my column, and I'm pairing numbers together, I'm multiplying the two numbers together, and then adding all the results together. So again, these yellow circles are trying to say we're now dealing with our first row and our second column. And again, we've got 1 times 8 plus 2 times 10 plus 3 times 12. And this goes here. That goes in my second position. Now, if you think about it, this was my first row and my second column. And if we go back to the very start of the video, we know that this actually here would be, let's call it matrix B, but with the subscript 1, 2. OMG, there is a 1 and there is a 2 to stand for the first row and the second column. So, if we were to look at this element here, and say we called the matrix result B, then that should be 2, 1. And what does that mean? Second row, first column, and lo and behold, there we go, second row, first column. 4 times 7 plus 5 times 9 plus 6 times 11 gives me 139. And finally, this one here. If it was B, our subscript would be 2, 2, which tells us second row and second column. 4 times 8 plus 5 times 10 plus 6 times 12. This stuff is flipping awesome. All right, so as I say here, these middle numbers, when they're the same for the order, we can multiply the two matrices together. So let's have a look at these two here. This is a 2 by 2, and this is a 2 by 1. Are these two numbers the same? They are, so it is defined. And these two numbers here, this 2 by 1, tells me the result of the vector. Uh, sorry, I keep saying vector. My apologies, of the matrix we're going to get. So, first row, first column. And there's only one column here. So I'm going to do 1 times 6 plus 2 times 3. So 1 times 6 plus 2 times 3, which is 12. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to do the second row and the first column. So 3 times 6 plus 4 times 3. 4 times 3. 3 sixes are 12, 18. 4 threes are 12. Add those together. Indeed gives me the 30. And there we go. That's awesome. Here's an example of where it's not possible to multiply to get them together. So again, what is my rows? So it's 2 by 1 and 2 by 2. Are these two numbers the same? They are not, and so we cannot multiply those together. Now, exam questions the world over ask things like, is the multiplication A, B defined? Whenever you see the word defined, it's actually just asking you to check these middle two numbers and just work out whether, in fact, it is possible to multiply it. Here's an example with a 1 by 2 and a 2 by 2. So one row by, and I'm going to do a by with a little times now. Well, that was a shocking little times. 1 by 2 and a 2 by 2. So are they the same? They are. So what is my result going to be? It's going to be a 1 by 2. So one row by 2 columns. One row by 2 columns. That's probably just a bit too big. And so let's work it through. First row. First column, 3 times 1, plus 4 times 3. Well, 3 times 1 is 3, and 12 is 15. And then row 1, by second column, is going to be 3 times 2, plus 4 times 4. 4, 4 is a 16, plus 6 is 22. And so there is my 
suggestion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't get confused. As I said earlier, most of these things and these questions are taken directly from Cambridge Essentials textbook. No infringement of copyright was um, intended. It's just a good set of questions. So just remember that like multiplication of um, normal algebra, if we see that a vector a is defined as, so they've said a is defined as 3, 2, minus 2, minus 2, and b is defined as 0, minus 3, 4, 1, then what it's really saying is if I'm looking for 2a, it's saying, well, can you please multiply everything inside that by 2? So we're going back to that scalar multiplication again. Everything inside that multiplied by 2. And if you remember, it would be 6, 4, minus 4, and minus 4. All right, so that first question is fairly simple. By the time we get on to things like 2a plus 3b, then it's asking you, well, multiply vector a by 2, multiply vector b by 3, and then please add the result together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice we haven't talked about division of matrices because you cannot divide matrices, but you can employ an awesome trick, which is coming up in the next video. So thanks very much for taking time to listen. Hope the day's been good for you. If you've liked it, why not leave a comment below and tell me how much you've liked the video. Tell me what I can do better. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.